so in this next video, I'm going to want to talk about not just what common probability distributions are, but how we represent those probability distributions in R, because that's going to be how we're going to use them in practice much of the time. So there's a bunch of different probability distributions that are already predefined in R, you know, scores and scores of them, and they follow a pretty common pattern. So most probability distributions that we use to describe the probability of density is represented as uh, beginning with the letter D to represent the fact that you're describing probability density, and then some shortened abbreviation for the name of the distribution, uh, such as binome, binomial is represented by binome, normal is represented by norm, uniform by unif, Poisson by pos, uh, and then they all have the first argument being, you know, this x, uh, which is uh, some specific value that you want to be able to calculate the probability density of. Um, and then they have some set of parameters which vary from distribution to distribution that describe that distribution. So again, so if I wanted to know, you know, the probability of uh, you know, three heads, if I flip four coins that are each, you know, have a probability of 0.5, I would say, you know, probability of getting three, uh, given uh, a number of n equals four and p equals 0.5. Um, for normal, if I want to calculate the probability of a specific value on the normal distribution, I put in that as x, given a specific mean and standard deviation. The uniform has a, a lower bound a and upper bound b. And the Poisson has a rate parameter lambda, so the, you know, the rate at which something can occur uh, in space or time. And then you know, x would be an integer. You know, how, many, how many times did you actually count that, given some, some rate lambda? And we can you know, take these distributions and stick numbers into them in R. So if we want to know the you know, uniform density uh, from or the you know, what's the value of the uniform distribution at 0.3, given a range from 0 to 0.5? Well, that's 2. And, you know, all values between 0 and 0.5 are going to be 2, because that's going to give us a rectangle uh, that's, you know, 0.5 on the base. It has to integrate to 1, so it has to be too tall. And the Poisson, we might say, what if I, you know, if something has an, a, an expected value of 2, you know, how often are we going to count three things? Well, you're going to see that 18% of the time. Or if we have uh, four coin flips that are fair at 0.5, how many times are we going to get heads? 25% uh, of the time. So this is great. We can plug in uh, our actual data. So very often, our actual data is going to be plugged in, uh, you know, say, as an x and given some parameters to calculate some probability. Uh, all of these distributions often also take vectors of values, which is handy because I can, for example, uh, design, define a sequence of values, say, along the x-axis. Um, and then I can stick that sequence of values in, given some specific uh, value, and then calculate you know, the probability density along that whole curve. So this is handy if I want to draw the curve or if I want to evaluate the curve. Um, I can plug in, you know, all these values and get back specific values that get handy to, to be able to put in a whole sequence of variables, particularly because we often have whole ta tables of data. Uh, 